Hey guys, Vladimir here. Three days before Christmas and here I am trying to squeeze in one more holiday design. Today we'll tackle this Christmas tree. The idea for this design came from my weekly online live class where during our show and tell session, one of the students showed off this print by principal user Embrace Next. I thought this would make for a great holiday design challenge, so I assigned it to be modeled in Fusion 360. There were many great approaches to tackling this design, and today I thought I would show you my method. I ended up printing it in PETG and in vase mode. Although the original design was made to be a candy dish, I decided to light it up with these little color changing LED lights. The trees are easily customizable so that you can make an entire forest with all different shapes and sizes. If you'd like to learn more about my weekly online live class or go at your own pace fusion courses, check out my link below. Okay, let's jump right in. All right, so we'll begin the usual way by creating a sketch on the XY plane, and I'm gonna come in with a polygon, more specifically a circumscribed polygon, and we'll start that right at the origin. I'm gonna go with a hexagon here. You can go with as many sides as you want. For example, a uh, pentagon would be a good choice here. All depends on the number of sides you want your Christmas tree to have. No wrong answer here. But I'm gonna go with my hexagon, and then I'm gonna go ahead and enter a dimension here of 50 millimeters for my radius. Now I'm gonna select this top edge here and make that uh, horizontal by giving it a horizontal constraint. And then I'm gonna, again, come in with another polygon. So basically create the same thing, another hexagon here. And for this dimension here, I'm gonna go ahead and reference that first dimension I made. You'll see it'll say D1 for dimension one. And next I wanna position it so that the center point of my polygon lines up with the center point here of my first polygon. And to do that, I'll grab my coincident constraint, click on my first center point, and then click on the origin here, and that lines them right up. Now it looks like there's only one shape here, but if I grab this corner here, let's try it one more time and start to rotate it. The non-constrained shape will begin to rotate. And now I can grab this edge here and apply a vertical constraint there. And you can see here that everything turned from blue to black, so that means everything is fully constrained. And you saw how I was quickly able to move my shapes into place there by taking advantage of my constraints. And I can't stress that enough to be able to become really comfortable with your constraints here. And that's why I created a constraints cheat sheet, which I have linked below, and you can download it, keep it by your side, reference it when you need it until it becomes second nature to you and you'll find how your designs just flow so much more smoothly. All right, let's continue. I'll click on finish sketch E for extrude. I'm going to select each one of these profiles starting with the big center profile there. If you accidentally click on something again, it deselects and you can just click on it one more time to reselect it. And I'm going to go with each one of these triangles here. You should have 13 profiles selected. And then we're going to orbit so we can grab this uh, arrow here and just bring it up. We're going to go with the distance there of 20 millimeters. And then I'm going to give it a taper angle of 30 and that'll flare this out. Click OK and then E for extrude again. We're going to click on this top profile, drag it up. We're going to first enter a taper angle here and we're going to go the opposite of our first taper angle, which was 30 degrees. So we're going to go negative 30 and that's going to taper it inwards. And next, we're just going to take the arrow and keep bringing it up until it comes to a point. If you go too far, you'll notice it'll start disappearing. Um, so you can get some wacky behavior happening. And then all you have to do is just kind of bring it back and to a point where you get that, that point there. So I think I'm going to just enter 110 here. And that looks like that works. And you can just try different numbers. Keep going down until you get your point. All right. Basically, this is the shape that we're gonna work with for the rest of this model. And the rest of the steps here are gonna involve scaling this and rotating it. To create a copy of this, we'll right click, go to move copy. And instead of clicking on the actual model, you can see I have all these different angles here and the little widget will wanna turn depending on which way the face is angled. Um, I basically want it to just go straight up and down and not you know, towards the point here. So what I'm going to do is select it by expanding my browser here bodies and clicking on the body there that way these arrows will just reflect my different axes so x y and z and i can click on create copy here on my dialog box and then take this and just drag it straight up i'm just going to go straight up until it clears the first model there click ok next i'm going to right click go to move copy and what i want to do here is rotate it so that you see here that these you have um 
sort of, uh, I guess, the, the peak and the valley here. I want it so that they alternate so that the peak will not like, flow into another peak, but flow into a valley here so that it, it's got this alternating look. So what I'm going to do is place my little widget right on the bottom uh, center point there. It'll snap right to that. And then I'm going to go to a top view and I'm going to start rotating it. And as you're rotating it, you want to look and you can see here how they begin to overlap. And it'll actually snap into place. And I can see in my case with my hexagons, it's 15 degrees. If you use the different uh, polygon, it's going to be a different angle. So just uh, be you know um, aware of that. But I'm going to go with 15 degrees there. Click OK. And now I'm going to move this. Actually, first we're going to scale it. So we're going to go to Modify down to Scale. Select it. I'm going with a uh, uniform scale here. In my points, you want to be careful here. I'm going to um, go ahead and select it. Since everything is on the origin, I'm going to use that as my scaling point. So everything will sort of scale inwards to that and it doesn't move out of place. Um, I can select it here or I can just click on the O here and that sets my origin point. As far as the scale factor, I'm going to go 80% or 0.8 is what you'll want to enter. Um, so we'll do a 0 0.8 scale factor and click OK. And we can see a scale down a bit. I'm going to go to Move Copy or right click, Move Copy, and then we're going to again select it. Instead of selecting it here, we're going to select it right here uh, on our browser there. It's going to be Body 2. And I'm going to orbit it so I can see the bottom here because basically what I want to do is take this arrow and just drag it straight down until this bottom face disappears. And you can see that it'll begin to disappear. Careful because you don't want this overhang there. So you want to kind of bring it all the way down until it kind of swallows it up there. That looks good. Doesn't need to be an exact number there just until that bottom disappears and we're good there. We're going to do that process one more time. So right click, move, copy. We're going to go ahead and select body two. Click on create copy on our dialog box here. And then uh, drag this arrow up so that it clears our model there. Actually, it doesn't, it doesn't really have to clear it. I just need to drag it up a bit. Click OK, and then we're going to go to Modify Scale. Uh, we'll click on Body 3. We'll scale this to be, I'm going to go with 0 0.7 here. Um, so I'm kind of doing it opposite. I'm scaling and then rotating. It doesn't matter which order. You can rotate, then scale, or scale, then rotate. Um, but we're going to do um, 7.7 7, uh, 7 scale factor uniform. Let's reselect that point. Um, just to make sure that it didn't select some kind of random point. I'm going to go to my uh, expand origin here and click the O. And that looks good. Click OK. Right click, move copy, and then we're going to go ahead and click on body 3 there. Um, same idea. This time it's actually too far down, so I'm going to move it up a bit. And again, move it back down so that that bottom face there just disappears. Oh wait, we still have to rotate it. So let's actually rotate it before we move it um, anymore. Because we'll, we can move it down, but then we'll have to readjust it. So let's do this. Let's right click, move copy. Um, so that's kind of the problem there. With Now I don't have that center. Um, I can't see the center there. And I can untoggle body two or in body three, actually body one there. So I can see that center point and I'll bring them back. All right, now I'm going to go to a top view here. And I'm just going to rotate this. I know it's 15 degrees, so I'll do the 15 degrees again. Click OK. And then again, we're going to go to uh, right click, move, copy. And then I'm going to grab it from here. And we're just going to take this arrow here, move it straight down. Be careful you grab the right arrow and not, you know, the X or the, uh, the Y arrow. You want the Z and the up and down arrow. And I'm going to move this down until that bottom face disappears. Click OK. And there we have it. That's our tree there. And so basically all we need to do now um, is combine this into one body because we just have these three different bodies right now. So we'll go to Modify Combine. I'm just going to select all three and make sure my operation is joined. Click OK. And now you can see all these bodies collapsed into one body there. All right. Basically, um, that's all you need here. I can um, send this, uh, export it to my 3D printer and print it in vase mode. I did create a hole in the bottom here for these little tea lights to fit in here, which I think is a nice touch. So to do that, we'll create a sketch on this bottom face there. And I measured uh, my tea lights, took a pair of calipers. And the ones I'm using were 37 millimeters, so I can just click a 37 uh, millimeter diameter circle there and then take that sketch and just extrude it up. So I'm just going to go up five millimeters here, negative five. Since I'm printing in vase mode, it's just basically um, doesn't really matter that distance. 
uh, but if you do want to print this solid, you would go up the distance of the tea light you're using. So I'll show you what this looks like in the slicer. Utilities make 3D prints, select it here. I'm going to go with my Prusa slicer there and it's going to bring it right up. And all I want to do is just make sure my print settings are set to uh, spiral vase mode here under layers and perimeters. So back to my platter here, if I slice that, uh, what's going on? Uh, all right, I've got too many models here. I forgot to let's send it one more time because I'm not sure which was the right one. Um, so if you have a model there, I'll just throw it on top. All right, I'm going to go ahead and slice it. And then you can see there, it's got my hole there. Um, you can increase the number of layers here um, that you want on the bottom there. So in this case, I think I have it set to, yeah, it's set to 12 layers. Um, but normally, I forget, it's like three, maybe three or four. What's the default? If I click on this little arrow, it'll tell me. Yeah, four layers is the default. And then you can slice that. So it is, if you want sort of a heavier bottom, in, especially when you're doing vase mode, and, you know, it may be a good idea to increase that and then... That way, when you slice it, you can have um, you know more number of, of layers on the bottom there if you want more of a solid um, bottom. Um, but that's basically it. And then you can you know you can take this. If I go back to Fusion, you can make different versions of this. So what I did is uh, let's say I want to create like a tall, skinny tree and then a short, um, shorter tree. Uh, I took my timeline here back before I did the hole there and you can quickly just make more copies of this so create a copy here and I'll kind of bring this out and then you know and then I can do a scale of the whole thing so back to my solid environment there modify scale um, and let's say this time I can do a, um, a non-uniform scale and X and Y um, so let's say do like 1.3 That'll make it bigger. But let's say I want um, tall and skinnier, so maybe do a 0 0.8 and Y 0 0.9 and Z. Um, actually, you want X and Y to be the same. Sorry, X and Y to be the same. And then Z, you want that. Let's say if you wanted it a little bit bigger, we could do like 1.2. Um, and you have sort of a taller, skinnier tree. Um, and then if I bring the timeline forward, that's only going to um, make the circle. Um, it doesn't apply it here, but what I can do is create another circle there. I would just draw two lines here, just make sure they go st uh, straight across. Find that intersection point. So X, X, to make them construction line, and then I'll do 37 millimeters uh, as a circle and let's bring that in one more time and then I will just so you just have to put in your hole after um, because if you scale you don't want to scale that hole the hole needs to be constant there because the you know size of the tea light is not changing um, but that's a quick way you can sort of just come scale make different sizes and then send them to your slicer and 3d print a bunch of them let me know if you found this tutorial helpful or if you have any questions on my approach. If you enjoy my content, then consider becoming a Patreon supporter. I've included my link below. If you'd like to finally master Fusion 360 to create your own designs, then check out my online courses also linked below. All right, guys, I will see you in a few.